the world of Land Rover, there are a number of choices. Range Rover, Discovery, Evoque, soon to be Defender, uh, you know, redesigned. It's all well and good. Within those separate families, there are more choices than you think too. The Range Rover Sport, which is a vehicle I'm driving right now, is quite a bit more diverse than you might initially expect. At first glance, it just looks like the slightly baby version of the big dog Range Rover, the slightly sportier looking one, hence the name, hence the roof line. But there's a lot more going on here. Personally, I've always preferred the big, full-size, badass Range Rover. It's a bit more luxurious. It's a bit more, look at me, look how amazing my life is. The Range Rover Sport kind of tucks in there and, and people like the styling a bit more. Some people like that. What I like right now about the Range Rover Sport is the diverse nature of the many varied engine options. Take, for example, the one I'm driving right now. This is the Range Rover Sport TD6 and TD6 means that it is a turbo diesel six cylinder. It's a three liter engine and it makes 254 horsepower, which isn't much, but it makes over 440 pound feet of torque which is plenty. This thing gets up and goes. Now it is not quick, however it is quicker than you think and sometimes that's better than knowing what the actual numbers are. I think car and driver tested one of these and zero to 60 is like just a bit over seven, which is slow in our modern day. But around town, this thing feels far quicker than you expect it to be. Part of that is owed to the eight speed ZF automatic gearbox sending power out to all four wheels appropriately. There are different driving modes. They're all mostly off-road focused, except you just leave this one in auto and you let it do its thing. It likes to get dirty. It likes to do fun, silly things. It's a Range Rover. It's a fancy looking Range Rover, but it is not the fanciest looking Range Rover. I like the fact that this diesel is a bit of a workhorse engine. And so if you want to take this off-road, you can get this in and out of places, thanks to all that low end grunt. Off-roading isn't about just high-flying, dune-bashing, Ford Raptor fun. It's about taking your time and enjoying the trail, depending on the type of off-roading that you're liking to do. You hose this thing off, and then you take it to dinner, you take it to work, and it is gloriously comfortable. It looks stylish on the outside. Their white paint on the outside of this one looks good with the black-trimmed roof. That's the second time that has done that to me. I feel like there's something going on with that inherent Range Roverness. It's comfortable inside, it's luxurious, it's stylish. Now, much like the Velar was the first one to have them, these come with the dual 10 inch screens that look like concept car infotainment and they work really well. They're easy to see for the most part. When the sun shines directly on it, it washes out a little bit, but not as bad as it should be. It looks good, it works well, you have lots of options to choose from here. There's some, still some physical buttons for things like the HVAC, but they're dual mode buttons depending on what you're doing. And the cool thing is when you shut the car off, all of it goes away. So it looks slick and then it turns on. And I hope to God all the electrical components last and work well and do good things because it looks good. And I know we still make fun of Jags and Land Rovers for their electrical issues, but they've really sorted a lot of that out. So on the road, the manners are great. As far as price, these start at about $74,000, which is a just like a $2,000 premium over a non-diesel one. There are supercharged gas engines that make 380 horsepower, and then you get into the big, mighty V8s and on up from there. This one as tested is $86,000. Tons of money, but you know, keeping this well under $100,000 is a great thing. That's how you get, that's how you know you found someone who has a Range Rover Sport and they're going to use it in all the manners in which the engineers intended. Or you could play on this end of the spectrum, the monster end. This is the Range Rover Sport SVR. And that means it is a badass truck. And that is because it has a supercharged five liter V8 engine under the hood. And it's been tweaked since it was introduced back in 2015. Used to make 550 horse. This one now makes 575 horsepower and absolutely goddamn ridiculous noise. That engine's backed up by the ZF eight speed automatic because of course it is. It's a great transmission that pretty much everybody uses now. 
This is a super silly Range Rover. It is tremendously fast, tremendously loud, and tremendously badass. It is essentially Jaguar F-Type the truck. It is shouty, it is farty, it is snappy, poppily, burbly. It's, a, it's like if there was a cereal named after it. There are other ridiculous things about this truck. It has optional 22-inch wheels, which no Range Rover actually needs. But these ones are wrapped in sticky, low-profile Continental tires so that you can actually make turns. This thing probably weighs 5,500 pounds, and it runs zero to 60 in just over four seconds. It is silly quick. Top speed is limited to 176 miles per hour because you really should not go faster than that in a Range Rover. Now you can still go and do all the things that you could do in the diesel one we drove earlier. This has terrain response, it has all the various drive modes, it has adjustable adaptive suspension, it has a two-speed transfer case. It is legit still a Range Rover. However, if you take this one off-road as it sits, you're gonna rip that chin spoiler off, you're gonna ruin those expensive wheels, and those low-profile tires are gonna do you absolutely no good on the rocks and the mud and all that fun stuff. I would love to see someone take one of these and re-off-road it. You know, lift it up a bit, take off the low-hanging body bits, put nice chunky tires and smaller wheels on it, and then just go attack the dunes somewhere. A Range Rover Raptor or, you know, something silly like that. Remember, hey, you know, Land Rover and Ford used to be together, so, I mean, they weren't scissoring, but they were together. This one has crazy race seats. It has the interior taken from the Velar like the other car. It is gorgeous on the outside. It is fitted with an absolutely useless, silly carbon fiber pack, which includes exposed carbon fiber on the hood and carbon caps on the mirrors. It's like $5,200. And how much weight could it possibly save you? The only color it probably even looks good on is silver or black like this one here. It would look just in your face too much on the white one, though maybe that would look kind of cool. I, you don't need it. And you can save money. The base price on these is around 112, 114. This one as tested is $132,000. You can knock off 5,200 by getting rid of the carbon fiber hood. I'm not gonna fault you if you do get it because there is something cool about exposed carbon fiber. But again, don't fool yourself into thinking like, oh, it's a race car now. It's totally, it's not, it is not. It is a Range Rover that can do absolutely mind bending things. It is definitely not a race car. It is fun though, it is great. There are a few things faster than it in a straight line in the SUV class. There's the absolutely batshit crazy Jeep Trackhawk, which has 707 horsepower. The Lamborghini Urus is likely faster uh, in a straight line as well. You have Bentley's Bentayga, which is really quick and costs, you know, $100,000 over this. No, though the new V8 starts at around 165, so you're only $30,000 away from a Bentley at this point. When you put this into dynamic driving mode, you can also further select specific options if you want to option this further and make it individual. Engine in dynamic or comfort, the gear shifts in dynamic or comfort, steering in dynamic or comfort, and suspension in dynamic or comfort. So those are the things that you can alter. If you just put it in dynamic, it goes in, just, those just go into dynamic. I like engine and the gear shifts in dynamic. I like the loud exhaust on, and then I like steering and suspension in comfort, because I'm a cozy guy. The noises are hilarious. The driving sensation is ridiculous. The overall effect of this SVR Range Rover Sport is wonderful. I love this truck. It is a fantastic machine that has no business existing, and I'm very happy that it does. So you have your two flavors of Range Rover Sport. It represents opposite ends of what you can do in this family of vehicle, and then there are other options out there. You could go with the Velar, which is, you know, somewhere just below this. You can go with the Big Daddy Range Rover Autobiography, super luxury machine if you want to spend $200,000 on a Range Rover. All of them can go off-road. It depends how far you want to go off-road and how many pieces on the body you want to break. So if you don't want to break any and you want your fuel economy to get you through and your torque to pull you through, get that TD6 because it's awesome. If you just want to devour mostly on-road stuff and chew up the highway miles and have a ridiculous physics warping rocket ship, the SVR is the one for you. Hey, uh. Okay, clap, clap. Clap, 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 clap. 
If there was a cereal named after this, it would be called Snap, Crackle, Pop, Motherfucker. That's not very British though, so maybe they wouldn't call it that. I say, would you like some Snap, Crackle, Pop? Delightful. <laughs> Carry on.